Hello and welcome to Ariel Making Tea, but through thermodynamics. Today I'm going to be making some tea and talking about endothermic versus exothermic reactions and thermal equilibrium and how we can learn about this just through the simple process of making tea. I'll start off by covering the basis of this process, endothermic and exothermic reactions. The ones that we're going to be working with today is endothermic, but I felt like I should cover both. Okay, first to start off, this is an example of an endothermic reaction. Just for this situation, we're going to have a mug of tea, hypothetically. We have a mug of tea which has the tea at a certain temperature, and ice cubes, also of a certain temperature, floating in the water. In this case scenario, this would mean that the heat was being absorbed by an object, and in this case, the object is ice. The ice is absorbing the heat of the water, therefore making it an endothermic reaction. As you can probably imagine, an exothermic reaction is quite the opposite of an endothermic reaction. If in our endothermic reaction we had heat being absorbed into an object, then in an exothermic reaction we have heat being taken away from an object. We can use ice as our example in here as well. If ice is being frozen, then the heat is being taken away, thus making it an exothermic reaction. Alright, let's return to our riveting tea-making experience. Now that we've got the reactions settled, we're going to witness them firsthand. First, obviously, to make tea, you need the hot water. I have the hot water here at a temperature of about 68 degrees, which is ideal for bringing out the peak flavor of tea. I filled the mug along with the tea bag with about 250 milliliters of this water at 68 degrees Celsius. While our tea is steeping, let's go over the laws of thermodynamics. There are actually three laws plus a zeroth law, but I'm only going to go over the first, the second, and the and the zeroth law because they are the only ones who are seemingly Oh my god, Errol, you're so lame, you messed that up. Anyway, um, they're the only ones that are seemingly pertinent to the situation that I'm covering today. Our first law is conservation of energy, which is similar to conservation of matter, which we learned about in our first unit during physics. This law states that energy can change forms and move around, but it is never created or destroyed. Our second law covers the topic of entropy, which is also known as delta S. Entropy is the number of possible arrangements of particles within a system. This basically, this law, the law of entropy, basically states that the total entropy in the universe will always increase. Energy moves from hot to cold. And here's our zeroth law, which is thermal equilibrium, which basically states that if A is in thermal equilibrium with B, and B is in thermal equilibrium with C, then A is in thermal equilibrium with C. But hey, what's thermal equilibrium, you ask? Well, in order to find that out, you'll have to stay tuned in this tea-making saga and find exactly what it is we're trying to achieve. Oh, hey, look at that, we're back. So for the next part of our experiment, I have my tea at a very, very hot 60 degrees Celsius, which would probably be scalding. So in order to cool down this tea, I want to put in some ice cubes. Now, you may remember this as one of our quiz problems, but this is something that I genuinely do. So I was really curious as to how this process worked. Each ice cube we are going to infer is about 0 degrees Celsius as it is frozen. And we know that the tea is at 60 degrees Celsius. So... By putting the ice cubes in the tea, we are going to expect them to eventually reach thermal equilibrium. This is a controlled experiment, so each has specific measurements. We know the measurement, we know the amount of water that we have in for the tea, and we are measuring each ice cube to be about 10 grams. So we're putting 10 grams of 10 grams for each ice cube at 0 degrees Celsius into 250 milliliters of water at 60 degrees Celsius and measuring the temperature to see how it changes and fluctuates according to the number of ice cubes added in this tea. So far I've added 30 grams of ice, so three ice cubes, and I've reached my temperature that I would like to stop at, which is 33 degrees. And that means that the ice and the tea have reached thermal equilibrium and have reached the temperature that I am 
going for. Yum. This is delicious tea. One more topic that I felt was important to touch on, even though it didn't really relate to the experiment that I was conducting, is the Gibbs Free Energy Theorem. This is a thermodynamic quantity equal to the enthalpy minus the product of the entropy and the absolute temperature. We touched briefly on entropy earlier when I was um, discussing the second law of thermodynamics, but basically this equation, um, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, is stating that um, the temperature of delta S total is equal to the, temp the temperature of uh, delta S, which is entropy, of the surroundings minus the temperature of delta S, which is the entropy, of the system. Um, G actually stands for Gibbs free energy, H is the heat content, T is the temperature in kelvins, and S is, as we discussed earlier, entropy. Before I end this video, I'd like to do a quick review of what thermal equilibrium was and how it was represented in my tier T experiment. Basically, if you have two objects of different temperatures and put them together, then they will eventually have to reach a thermal equilibrium of one temperature, such as the tea was 70 degrees and the ice was about 0 degrees. By combining them together, we got an equilibrium of about 33 degrees, which was the ideal temperature that I wanted my tea at. This is how you reach thermal equilibrium.